Hello friends, welcome back to Sophistic Cakes by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this cake that is very similar to other cakes that I made and uses elements from other cakes that I made. But the difference on this cake is that I used rice paper instead of wafer paper to make my edible crinoline. So that's something different. So let's get started with the rice paper, I'm sorry, wafer paper petals. I am just using my, these are peony cutters and marking out the shape on some wafer paper. Now this is just zero grade wafer paper is all this is. And I cut out, I believe, I'm not sure how many total, but I use the three different sizes. And I'm adding some food coloring to some wafer paper conditioner, which I will link in the description box or um, put the recipe for the, the wafer paper glue and for the edible crinoline in the description box. So if I miss any details, don't worry, go down there and find that information down there. And all I'm doing is adding some texture. I brushed the conditioner onto the petals and then pressed them into my, um, my veining, silicone petal veining uh, tools here. And I'm using cornstarch to keep them from sticking. Now, one thing you need to make sure that you watch out for is you don't want to totally oversaturate these because they might not dry very well. Um, I would recommend just doing a light brushing of the color on top of there with the wafer paper conditioner. Just make sure they don't get too, you know, too overly saturated. You do want them to dry. And I set those aside to dry. And now I'm making my edible crinoline using the rice paper instead of the wafer paper. And guys, I'm telling you, I actually like this better. I really do, I like this better. And all I'm doing is I am submerging the pieces of, of the, um, I always do this, the rice paper in water, just regular water. And just leaving it for about 10 minutes. Now, like I said, the, um, the ingredients, the amount, the quantities of all the ingredients, I will link down below. And then I added some food coloring to them because I wanted them to have a pale pink color as well. The whole thing's kind of a monochrome color theme on this one. And let it sit for another amount of time. And once it is thoroughly saturated, put it into an immersion blender. Um, I like my Ninja, any kind of a food processor, any kind of a tool that's going to completely emulsify them together. And I add a little bit of vegetable oil, vegetable oil to it and mix that up again. And when you're done, this is the consistency that you're gonna have. It's very fluid, but it has a little bit of density to it. I'm not sure if that makes sense. It, um, it holds its shape. It doesn't seem quite as fragile. And you're just gonna move this around with, I like to use a silicone pastry brush you can use a spatula. I just find that I like the pastry brush better. I think it gives me a little bit more lacing. You wanna make sure that your pan is to about a medium high heat before you put the lace on there because that's what's going to make it form the lacy look. It's the bubbles that you get when it starts bubbling as soon as you put the product on your preheated pan. And then you just lift it gently from your pan and there you have your lace or your edible um, Crinoline, depending on what you want to call it. I've heard it called both. And this is some fondant that I had let set out overnight. And what that does is it gives it a crust on the outside. You could leave it out for a, a few hours. Um, you're just going to get more of um, the textured look to it the longer it's sat out. Um, yeah, I would say at least a couple of hours. And to help that, you can use a creme brulee torch to kind of toast the surface of your fondant. You don't want it to turn brown necessarily. You don't want to hold it that close, but you want to just kind of toast that outside of the fondant and that will help you create this nice crackle effect. I'm going to do that with all my pieces. This is a good way to use up extra fondant that you have that's slightly dried out, but still a little bit more, a little bit malleable. You can uh, do a technique like this. And what I did there was I rolled out a fresh piece of fondant underneath and I attached those crackled pieces on top with a little bit of water. You can use shortening, but I think when, if you're pretty sure about the placement where you're putting it, water is going to do a little bit better of a job on this technique because you're piecing together things, pieces of fondant that have some 
hardness, you know, firm pieces in them. And that can kind of tear at your fondant underneath it. And um, you're also making that fondant underneath pretty thin while you're rolling this out. So then I just put a little bit of cornstarch under the surface and then I'm going to cut it down to size. Just you figure out the size by measuring the circumference and the height of your tier, your crumb, cr crumb, crumb coated. Why do I always trip on that crumb coated um, cake? And then that way you have the dimensions of the length and the height of the piece of fondant. I'm just attaching for some extra texture, some sugar crystals. I'm using clear and silver. I just put a little bit of water anywhere that you think might be a natural veining spot and attach your crystals there. And just kind of push them in with your hand. You can roll over them a little bit with your roller. And if some of the pieces fall out, that's okay. This is supposed to be a natural age stone effect. So imperfections happen. Now, once I have this ready, I just set it aside and let it firm up a little bit. That way, when I transfer it onto the cake, it's not falling apart. Now, this is for my top tier now. I'm going to use that impression mat that I have. That's a Angela Morrison impression mat, and it's so pretty. And I used it on a cake before. I don't know if you saw it, it was my um, arched cake top forward cake that I made, but I wanted to use it on a larger, a larger surface. So I'm gonna use this on my top tier for another added texture. These mats are wonderful. I highly recommend them. They're, all they are is like a foam material and very fine details, but they all get transferred onto your fondant. I was a little wary of that, but it works really, really well. And then I just trimmed off my excess. Cornstarch your, your mat so that it doesn't stick and use the pressure of your hands and a roller to make sure you get that impression onto your fondant. And then just slowly peel it away. Isn't that pretty? Now you can go back and you can add some accents to your, your impression there with your, your pattern with um, some paint, edible paint if you want. On um, the one I did before, I used some edible gold paint but this time I didn't want that. I wanted everything to be more natural and like I said, more monochromatic. And I put that piece on the top and flip it upside down. And that's a really good way to cut off your excess without it stretching and pulling. And also I put the fondant on there while it's upside down. So that creates your crisp edge right away. Now you can set this in the fridge and let it firm up. Um, typically I do that. I don't know why I didn't this time. And that would have made this a little easier because I did have to go back and redefine that top edge. Now, if you had put it in your refrigerator and let it firmed up, it wouldn't have sagged at all. And that would have been easy to, to uh, do that way. Kind of wish I had, but it still, it still worked, worked out well. I just pushed it back into place with my fondant smoothers. And this is my bottom tier. I used any off cuts I had from when I made this panel and just patchwork those onto the top since you're not really gonna see much of that top, just kind of the outside edge of it, about the outside inch. Um, you don't have to worry about it being too perfect. I'm just cutting off the excess off of where they overlap and also off of the top. You could tear this if you want a more um, uneven look on the top. You could just tear that edge, but this time I wanted it to be matched up because I knew Honestly, I wasn't too worried about because I knew I was going to do that draping effect in between the top two tiers, or in between the two tiers where they meet. So I wasn't too worried about getting it perfect. I'm just using some straws as my support. Since this is a small tier that's going on top, this is a six inch and a four inch cake. I am do I'm only gonna use four straws. You don't really need that much to support that top tier. Now just push them all down, mark where they meet the top of the cake and cut them flush. And then put a little bit of buttercream on the top to anchor the top tier to the bottom so that it does not slide around. And since this cake had been chilled at this point, I could lift it up with my hands with no problem. Now I'm making the swag. 
And what I did was I took more of the leftover pieces and just stuck them together with some water. And then I ruched them together. And then as delicately as you can, <laughs> lift it on to the cake. Now I would leave it to set for a few minutes before you even attempt doing that. Now don't overthink this process. You're really honestly just piecing it together. And then just use your hands to just kind of push it together to create that ruching. It doesn't have to be a perfect ruche. This is natural, remember? I'm not trying to mimic um, fabric this time and attach it with just some, some water. I would not go with shortening on this technique because there's some weight to this fondant, dra fondant draped piece. And you just place it on there and then wrap it around to the back. Make sure that it's stuck on good. And then I'm using my Dresden tool to just kind of reaffirm or just to kind of redefine it and tuck any of those um, rough edges in. Then I made some fondant little roses with just the silicone. You can see it back there, a little silicone impression mat, or it's actually a mold with the same fondant that I have been using. I just used some cornstarch to keep them from sticking, press them in, and then release them and just kind of stuck them here and there and everywhere. And I'm attaching my uh, crinoline with just some um, piping gel. Now these are kind of you do have to mess with these. If you need to use uh, toothpicks to hold them in place while they dry, well, the, the pieces are dry, but while they, um, the edible glue really affixes them to, to the fondant, use some um, toothpicks. Just remember to, to take them out when it has set up. Now these are my leaves, or I'm sorry, my petals, and I'm just taking them off of those silicone molds. These are just sphere molds that I like to use to form petals. If you use it upside down, you put some cornstarch on there, then that is a good place to form your petals. Now these do have some flexibility to them. They don't dry hard. Um, that's part of the reason why I like to use the wafer paper conditioner because they don't dry crisp. You can still kind of manipulate them a little bit. And I'm just sticking them in where I feel like they look the best. Please ignore my face. <laughs> I can't work on a cake without being in the, in the image or in the, um, the frame. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. And sometimes, honestly, I forget that I'm filming and I just stand in the way. So I apologize for that. So there it is all done, guys. I hope you like it. I hope you got some inspiration. And you can do this in a variety of colors. It doesn't have to be this, this uh, blush pink. I think lavender would be pretty or a combination of colors. And, and I appreciate you watching my video. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.